you have to admit, Uncle Andy, Dimpton makes a good fray. I would say adequate. Just adequate. Don't listen to him, love. This is gorgeous. It's a lot better than the burnt offerings you used to make when you first came here. <laughs> no harm to you, love. But the food you used to make was... Unappetizing. Nah. Inedible. Nah, stinking, that's it. <laughs> but to be fair, you've practised hard and now the food's... Adequate. Here, your shirt's ready. Green one? I wanted the blue one. I haven't washed it yet. But it's been in the wash all this morning. I hope you had washed my silks. And remember, use a cool iron. <laughs> what do you want clean clothes for? Sure none of the rest of you is. <laughs> What's that supposed to be? Well, when was the last time you washed your hair? Dip now, as I have told you, shampoo ruins the natural oils in the follicles. <laughs> the best thing to do is not wash your hair at all. And then after six months, it starts to clean itself. <laughs> so, uh, how long have you been waiting for it to clean itself? About 12 years. <laughs> so, Billy, was there any scandal down at the station? Aye, Sergeant Patterson's wife left them. Did she give a reason? Aye, she said he'd been taking her for granted. Sounds like he deserved it. Excuse me? He's devastated. There's just him and the girlfriend now. <laughs> Are you still serving? <laughs> well, we stopped serving breakfast at 12 o'clock, Mervyn. But as it's yourself, great stuff. Dip a, a fresh pot of tea and some toast for Mervyn there. Do you mind that's my breakfast? Ah, dip now. Nah. <laughs> the last thing a newlywed should want to do is stuff herself with fries. A moment on the lips. A lifetime on the hips. <laughs> oh, has a point, Dip now. Maybe you should have cornflakes or something. Are you joking? They remind me of his scalp. <laughs> That's ridiculous! Of course it's ridiculous. His scalp's more like Frosty's on account of the wee white bits. <laughs> Excuse me! And since when did you all become sales reps for head and shoulders? And anyway, do, uh, people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Unless you live in North Belfast, then you can throw as many as you like. <laughs> People in glass houses. Well, you have to admit, Dipna, you have let yourself go a bit. <laughs> what? Oh, it's nothing new. Man walks down the aisle with Naomi Campbell. Then one day he wakes up to find his land beside Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> Excuse me, but I have not put on weight. Come, come, dip. Now, it's a well-known fact that the majority of women can't fit into their wedding dress a month after the ceremony. Oh, is that a fact? Well, I'll show you. All right, Dimna, what are you doing? You don't have to prove yourself to him. Oh, so you think I'm fat as well, do you? No. I love you whatever says you are. <laughs> well, that's it. I'll show the pair of you. Rick, that's ten pounds, you mean? All right, what's going on here? I bet Billy ten pounds that I could get Dimna to wear a wedding dress today. Should have knew better. Yes, you should. Because, as you know, I can get a woman to do anything I want. Except sleep well. <laughs> Ta-da! You see? Perfect fit. Aye, very good, love. Are you not even going to look? I've seen it before, love, remember? Ah, uh, it's a sad fact, Tiffany. But you won't always be able to fit into that dress. Time takes its toll. Do you know that since you were upstairs, I gained ten pounds. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is this some kind of a bet? No. Yes. No? Yes. He bet him that you wouldn't get into that dress. Quick, <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 get this out of the wash. Kill stains, you know. <laughs> you know, sister, looking back, I should have been a nun. Well, Ma, you'd have had to give up the chance of ever getting married and having children. Yeah. <laughs> Looking back, I should have really been a nun. Some Saturday night this is, Carl. Stuck in the kitchen, no TV, and a penguin in the living room. <laughs> Just 
watch TV anyway. And how are we going to watch Ibiza unzipped in front of Sister Act there? <laughs> TV's convent's close at. Any chance of that tea? <laughs> ah, it's coming up. Which one's me? <laughs> there you go, Sister Immaculata. A nice cup of tea on a Saturday night. With match of the day about to start, but not in this house. Would you like a penguin, sister? No, thanks. Her tea is fine. Don't suppose you'd fancy anything a wee bit stronger? Well, actually, I'll take a small sherry off you. Brilliant, Carl! Uh, you don't mind if we join you, do you? Oh, not at all. You needn't think you're going to sit here getting full in front of us. Excuse me. <laughs> sister Immaculata's having a wee drink, and it would be rude of us not to join her. No, Sherry, I'm afraid, <laughs> sister. Do you need beer, do you? Thanks. Don't suppose you want to watch a beef that unzipped, do you? Cal, Sister Immaculata wouldn't even know what that programme is. Oh, not at all. We watch it all the time in the convent. The girls think it's very entertaining. <laughs> are you sure you're a nun? <laughs> or are you on your way to a fancy dress? You know, the church has moved on. Attitudes are changing. The human body is nothing to be ashamed of. Aye. Well, it all depends whose body you're looking at, doesn't it? And sex. Sex is not a dirty word. It's part of life. I mean, how do you think we create children? I wouldn't know, sister. <laughs> I closed my eyes and thought of something else. What I'm saying is that the church has changed for the better. For too long, the church was out of touch with young people. Ah, oh, well, now, I think that was good, because it was touching young people that got this in there. <laughs> 30 quid. 30 quid? It cost me to get this dress dry cleaned. Man, I've had it up to here with men. You know, sometimes I wish I'd been born pig ugly and then I could have been a nun. <laughs> have you met Sister Immaculata? She's great crack. I will, it's like a, I always said to you, you were always taking a risk of marrying a Protestant, wasn't she, sister? Oh, not at all. Protestants are part of our great Christian family. I well, I think you've gone too far there, sister. <laughs> I mean, I am a liberal mom, but even I have my limits. Oh, come on. <laughs> they are our brothers in Christ. I well, Christ himself couldn't like them even if he reared them. <laughs> it's all right for you sitting up there in your convent. You don't have to work with them day and daily like I do. But, uh, did you not tell me that the great Wolf Tone himself wanted the Irish Republic for everybody? Catholic, Protestant and the centre? Well, yes, he did. But Wolf Tone didn't have to go up to New Stormont and sit and listen to Cedric Wilson. So, uh, did you get to stay in out of your dress? Aye. It took two runs. But thankfully, it all came out. So, uh, where exactly is this staying then? <laughs> 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 Lovely dinner, love. Listen, I know I said I do dishes, but I'm running a bit late here. For what? A stag night. You never told me about no stag night. Well, I'm telling you now. Who's stag night? Uh, Mervyn's nephew, very good friend of mine. We, uh... Richard. Aye, we Richard. He's getting married to, uh... Carry on. Aye. <laughs> so, it's we thing he's stag night down the knee breakers, and he'd be very disappointed if I didn't show up. Because, like, I'm one of his best mates. Best mates? So how come we're not invited to the wedding? No Catholics. <laughs> <laughs> no offence, them, man. But they do want their traditional wedding, you know. So, uh, did you manage to get the stain out? Aye, it took four goes this time. I cannot get the sauce out of this bottle! Give me that! That's a problem! From now on, I don't want any of you coming anywhere near this dress. It might not matter to you. But I wore this dress on the happiest day of my life. The day me and Billy made our eternal vows together. <laughs> Great. Let's hit the pub. Oh, Dentner, Richard was telling me Kelly Ann doesn't have her dress yet. She's looking something cheap. Where'd you get yours? <laughs> Here we go, Kelly Ann. A beautiful white wedding dress. Is that not Dentner's dress? Shut up. And I can assure you, it's only had one previous owner. 
I am not getting married in a wedding dress that's been worn by another woman. Oh, no, 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 no. It was never worn. The bride that owned this dress died tragically a week before the wedding. <laughs> Lucky, eh? That's a dead woman's dress. Well, it's either this or Oxfam. This <laughs> wedding is yours. Are you sure it'll fit? Well, it may be a bit of a squeeze, but I'm sure we can get you in the there. It looks a bit small. Well, for an extra tenner, I could pass it on to our alterations department. <laughs> I can let it out a bit for you. Not too much now, because I plan to lose all this weight. By Fred. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to exercise a bit and diet. This will all come off in no time. You mean you're just fat? <laughs> I thought you were pregnant. I am pregnant. For an extra tenner, I could diet slightly off weight for you. <laughs> a couple of slits should do the trick. Here, Ollie, what's Demna going to say about all this? Nothing. We get the dress back, I put a couple of stitches up a side, and she'll be none the wiser. And the lot of Kelly aunt it doesn't have long to go. I wonder why she doesn't wait till after she's had the baby and then get hitched. Well, she wants an excuse for looking fat in the photographs. <laughs> Here, pull that. <laughs> Ach, it's all this bloody lace. It's full of layers. Typical dimple. This is cheap rubbish. I have seen better wedding dresses at a transvestite's convention. Dimple! <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help noticing there were a few loose threads on your wedding dress. So I thought I'd trim them, like, because I know how much you love this dress. <laughs> Billy! How could you just sit there and watch while they cut up my wedding dress? What dress? Sorry, love, I was watching the football. <laughs> He's just a drunken, selfish, insensitive pig. Yeah, but just you remember, I'm still your father. <laughs> Do you have any idea what it's like to live with Uncle Andy? You think you've got a problem? This is the third time this week I've had black narcissus round here. <laughs> is she no convent to go to? This is great. When they get him out of the trunk, he's still alive, and Joe Pesci has to finish him off with a bread knife. <laughs> and then doesn't Robert De Niro hit him over the head with a shovel? Just to be sure. Have you seen this before, sister? Oh, yes. Martin Scorsese's work addresses the serious issue of violence in society. Aye, good point, sister. Here, after this, do you want to watch Hellraiser 3? You know what? I'd leave him tomorrow. Why don't you? He's got too much money. Oh, there is more to life than money. Yeah. Well then, I have to stay with him for the sake of the kids. Kids? <laughs> But you don't have any kids. Yeah, but I might have, mightn't I? I mean, you had us and you didn't leave my dad. Yes, I did. He just kept following me. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, love, I'm really sorry about your wedding dress and taking you for granted and everything. So I've made you your breakfast. It's a kind of a peace offering. Well, you're not going to say anything? Sick, you say? Aye, puked a ring first thing this morning. Morning sickness? Do you know what that means, Billy? I should let her lie until 12. <laughs> No, she is pregnant. Only last night she was going on about having kids. Pregnant? What should I do? Nothing. This is a very special time for a woman. We have to be very sensitive. Let her tell us in her own good time. Whatever we do, we must not jump the gun. <laughs> Keep any secrets from me, darling. I'm a policeman. <laughs> That's what they used to say to me in Castle Ray. I called you, darling. Well, Billy, as long as you don't be the of them, let her tell us in her own good time. Congratulations! Oh, I hope it's a boy. 
For the woman in this family haven't had much luck. <laughs> Wait a minute. You all think that I... Yes, and I want the boy. It has to be a boy. This could be the start of my great political dynasty. We could be like the Kennedys. What, we all get shot? <laughs> Must say, Iracy skips a generation. So there it is, Mervyn. You can see it with your own eyes. A Protestant man being outbred in his own home. Ah, but kiddies are dead cute and vulnerable. They're full of innocence. And book. They don't want a baby. A baby will do nothing but whinge and cry and yap and moan and gurn all day and all night. Nothing will please it. It'll be like living with Brendan McKenna. I think you're looking at this all wrong, aren't we? I mean, think about it. You've never had any children of your own? No, I haven't. No matter what the CSA say. Billy and Dutton's baby will be living under your roof. It'll be your chance to raise the perfect present from scratch. You're right. Like, by the time I got Billy, he was already flawed. But this youngster is a blank canvas. Finally, I get a chance to mould a child in my own image. But it's not a girl, Liam. For the last time. Dear, I am no. not... You shouldn't be standing. Not in your most delicate condition. Sit down. Let me make you comfortable. Now, I don't want to see you doing anything strenuous. We have to think of our child now. No, you've got it all wrong. You see how special you are, Dipna? Even Uncle Andy can't do enough for you. <laughs> and after that, there was Chuck Aquitic and John Jr. and the... <whistles> no, I don't want to be part of a political dynasty. All right, maybe the Kennedys was a bad example. We could be like the Gandhis. <laughs> the Gandhis? Oh, no. Even the woman got shot. <laughs> you going into work today, love? No, nah, I'm just popping in for a medical. Only two months in sick leave and they're hauling me in. Well, that's a new Pisney for you. Anyway, how was your breakfast? Did it make it right? Well, the toast was slightly soggy and the bacon could have been crispier, but all in all, it wasn't a bad effort. I'll make it better next time. <laughs> What are you doing? In the middle of the night, Dipna got a craving for fresh mango soup. Mango soup? Yeah, I've been out all night looking for them. But hey, nothing's too much trouble for my child. Are they Asian or South American mangoes, Andy? I don't know. It was a Chinese fella who sold them to me, though. No, it is a medical fact that you can't eat Asian mangoes when you're pregnant. They might harm my child. Right. South American mangoes, it is. <laughs> so, uh, you going on holiday, Doctor? No, Billy, I'm emigrating to Australia. <laughs> this time next week, we'll be sipping cocktails on Bondi Beach. I'm sure the wife will love that. <laughs> I'm not taking her. <laughs> she doesn't know a thing about it. I'm taking Susie. You're abandoning your wife for Barbie Doll's younger sister out there. Fair play to you. <laughs> so anyway, uh, what's wrong with me? I'm afraid, Billy, I have some very bad news for you. You're perfectly fit and healthy. Oh, God, no. That means I'll have to go back to work. I'm afraid so. Can you not say I've got a wee dose of something? <laughs> like what? <laughs> Hypochondria? <laughs> oh, aye, that sounds good. <laughs> Billy, there's nothing wrong with you. You do know you're sterile, don't you? Sterile? What do you mean, sterile? Firing blanks. <laughs> oh, no, no, that can't be right. Because, you see, my wife is pregnant and... <laughs> Counselling isn't really my area. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll make you an appointment to see Janice. Right, I've got the lay cheese, the pak choy, the breadfruit, the Sardinian truffles. Um, the South China Sea abalone. Now, tell us again, how do you make a stew? Now, I love that. I've suddenly developed a craving for genuine American Hershey bars. Right, Hershey bars! <laughs> Hang on a minute. You're not having cravings at all. You're doing all this to wind me up. No. Andy, it's a mother-son thing. My son is telling me what he wants. Oh. And how could I refuse a young Patrick Pierce Connolly? 
Connery. Pierce. Connery? Well, it's either that or Martin Jerry. Excuse me, Uncle Andy. I want to work with my wife. In private. Two right you do. Patrick Pierce, Connolly, Martin Jerry. <laughs> oh, and I want paid for those troubles. <laughs> I don't think you're ready for this jelly. I don't think you're ready for this jelly. I don't think you're ready for this jelly. Cause my body's not good enough for you, babe. I don't think you're ready for uh, this jelly. Ah, you've got to admit it, ma. Saturday nights have been swinging since the sisters started coming around here. What? And I'm strutting around our living room singing Bertie Licious. <laughs> Even Pat Buckley would be disgusted. <laughs> That's it. I've left him for good this time. And I'm never going back. He has insulted me for the last time. What's the matter? Oh, he goes to the doctor. The doctor tells him he's sterile. And what does he do? He jumps to conclusions. He accuses me of fooling around and having an affair and not being pregnant with his child just because he's sterile. <laughs> well, I didn't take that line to him. I says to him, Billy, if you haven't got trust, what have you got? And I just stormed out. Right. Well, you can just sit there and make it a list of who the father might be. Because I am telling you now, the ceasefire is over. Oh, not you as well. What do you mean, not me as well? I have not been fooling around with another man. Oh, have you not? Well, let me tell you, I believe the boys in Colombia before I believe you. <laughs> Sister, do something there. Like what? I don't know. Stick her in a convent or something. I'll sign her in. I do what? I don't know. I was thinking something like... That'll teach you, you harlot. Have you heard about this one, sisters? Not alone does she break her poor, hard-working father's heart by marrying a dirty, filthy Protestant, but then she goes and gets herself pregnant out of wedlock. <gasps> Married a Protestant! What shall we do? Mangle! 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 Something like that. But don't be too hard on her now, because she's still my daughter. No, 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 Dad. You've got it all wrong. The Catholic Church has changed. The Sisters of Clemency won't countenance any torture in our convent. All right. You think I should try the Sisters of Charity? <laughs> uh, none of it surprises me, Mervyn. You see, your Catholic is naturally disloyal. <laughs> But Billy and Devna seem so happy to gar. Ah, uh, so did David and Jerry. But we all know there's problems there. <laughs> Good day, Cobber. <laughs> Sorry? I'm Dr. Wilson, the occupational physician in the police. Is Billy in? No, he's at work. <laughs> oh, yes. That's my fault. <laughs> Speaking about my fault, I made a slight boob the other day. Told him he was sterile. <laughs> Actually, he's not. <laughs> I was looking at the wrong report. Easy mistake to make. What with there being so many billies in the police? <laughs> and love may <it> continue. <laughs> I hope it didn't cause any problems at home. Oh, no. <laughs> anyway, if you could give him this report, I'd give it to him myself when I'm emigrating to Australia. Really? And you're never coming back? Oh, no. And if my wife calls, you didn't see me. <laughs> Oh, that's brilliant news. Billy will be over the moon. I suppose you can't wait to... <laughs> uh, it's for his own good. <laughs> no, we can't let that happen. I want a complete rewrite. Billy has to find out about that report. Yeah, but he needs to find out in a totally believable way. Oh, yeah, of course. It's Dr. Wilson's report. I don't think that though. He's made a mistake. I'm not sterile. Then this child is mine. Oh, this is just like Drum Cree. I'm never gonna win. (laughs) 
I'm not pregnant. You're not pregnant? Well, what did you say you were for? Because <laughs> everybody was being so nice to me. What? You were always nice to you, you dozy bitch. <laughs> I have to tell Billy the truth. Aye, confess to your peer. Have I taught you nothing? <laughs> Laundry for you, my dear, and Australia for the youngster. 